Second John, verse 10. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. Second Corinthians 11.3. This is where we left off last time. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the work of Satan. Because Satan is behind these deceivers, the topic of 2 John. 2 Corinthians 11.3 But I fear, least by any means, as the serpent, Genesis 3, beguiled Eve, that's a great word, look that up, through his subtility, to, so your mind should be corrupted. You want your mind corrupted? From the simplicity that is in Christ. What's the simplicity? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How do you go from that? Baptism. Membership. Sell magazines. Do works. It's when you take the simplicity of the gospel and you add artificial preservatives to it. You add works. Not of works, least any man should boast. And what Satan's doing, he's trying to beguile He's trying to corrupt you. And this is exactly what John is warning us. <coughs> and this letter, excuse me, I, I got a bad throat. And what we're going to do is we're going to see the works of Satan. Eve gave the serpent audience. That serpent in, in Revelation chapter 12 says Satan, the old serpent. John said, receive them not. Why? Why do we always have to question what the Bible says? It's written for our instruction. It's written for our knowledge. It is there to prevent us from doing wrong. It is there to help us to do right. Second, uh, Satan is a roaring lion, the Bible says. Seeking and devouring. He loves all ages of Christians. Especially the newborn and the infants. Because they don't know much. They're not in the word yet. They're, they're fresh. They are veal to Satan. And he loves it. He will send the right man or woman. Now let's look at 2 Corinthians 11, 13. Same chapter. <coughs> For such are false apostles. Who proclaim to be apostles of, of Jesus Christ. Yet they don't have the three signs. They don't have the three testimonies of a true apostle. Yet, but they profess to be apostles. Right there, they're liars. Deceitful workers. Deceit. Second John. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. There's a church that says they can trace their big head honcho all the way back to Peter. And you can't. Because scriptures violate that teaching. That is a deceitful worker. According to the Bible. No marvel. So there's a comic book. Marvel. No marvel. For Satan, there he is. Himself. Is transformed. Transformers. He switches himself. From something he is. To something he's not. A car can be a robot. A robot can be a car. Into an angel of light. Well, I'm in the hospital room. I'm laying on a gurney. I've died. I've seen this light at the end of the tunnel. And I come back to life and I wrote a book and made a million dollars. You sure that wasn't Satan? Are you sure that light at the end of the tunnel wasn't a train coming after your butt? Because John chapter 1 says, Jesus Christ is the light, capital L. John chapter 3 says, the light has come into the world to show us that God loves us and that Jesus can save your soul. Here, Satan shows up. He's transformed from an angel of darkness to look like light. A lot of those hospital stories are drug influence or Satan influence. I'm not saying they're all. I mean, maybe one's true. I don't know. We got to be careful. Remember, Satan will deceive you. He'll deceive you with stories. 
You know, I saw Jesus in my toast. This angel came down and I took a feather of him, blah, 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 blah. I got the head of, of the baby John the Baptist and I got the head of the adult John the Baptist. Therefore, it is no great thing if his. Now, who's the his? Verse 14. We're talking about Satan. Verse 15. That his is Satan. His ministers. There are men and women. The Bible says women are not to be preachers. They're not to be ministers, not to be pastors. There are men and women that are behind pulpits, on television, behind the radio, whatever their ministry is involved, buses, whatever it can be, they may be ministers of Satan. Now, how close are they? Also be transformed. If his ministers also be transformed, a lot of transforming going here. Transgender. Transvestite? Is that today's modern words? As the ministers of righteousness. You know how close they are? They look like they're right. They talk like they're right. They act like they're right. And yet they are Satan's ministers. And John warns us about the deceivers, about these people. Paul tells us. There are ministers there right now that are of Satan and not God. That's a warning. That is thunder. Satan knows who to send to you and will not send an unprofessional. If he cannot get you, if you allow him in your house, he may influence one or all of your family. He may not get you. He may get your spouse. He may not get you and your spouse. He may get your children or whoever else is in your house. The Bible says, don't let them in. What do I say? Don't let them in. Well, if no one's home, don't let them in. If Even if you are... Even if you are not caught off guard, your family may be the fatalities. Fatality, excuse me. The Bible says, receive them not in your house. It's that simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Receive them not in your house. Simple. God is simple. Listen, there are Satan ministers. And much carefulness must be spoken about them. Because they're alive and well, damning people's souls, saved and lost. In Matthew 7 15, Jesus spoke about these as Paul has spoken, as John has spoken. Jesus Christ himself warns us how they walk, how they talk, and the appearance are comparable to act similar to Christians. And that's exactly what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. They appear as ministers of righteousness. They look righteous, but on the inside, they're a wolf. They are a lion. They are of Satan, no matter how much you like them, how much you care about them, how good they sound, how well that message is, that may be a minister of unrighteousness Jesus tells us Paul tells us and John tells us have nothing to do with that I like them I like them is a great phrase to say I'll lose rewards and crowns okay they may be almost too hard to tell apart Jesus warns us of their trickery we can't say we're without warning. You've got to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How do I not fall for the deceiving of Satan and these religions? Study and read your Bible. Don't go out and get a self-help book. Don't get a how-to book. 101 ways of this, Christ, of this Christian faith. 200 ways to deal with a Jehovah Witness. The true belief of them. Don't do that. 
get in the Bible. Read and study your Bible. Solomon was fooled by Satan by his desire, marrying women. And he fell off to idolatry and false god worship. David was supposed to be in the battle. And he looked upon, listen, that's all Satan. Satan knows how to use the tools to get you on his side. He has been dealing with men since Adam. 4,000 plus years. How many men have there been? How many humans since Adam? Satan has that experience under his belt. And according to 1 John, he only uses three tools. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He's been using three tools for over 4,000 years. And let's read on. Let's study more. He has been, Satan has been, and he's no apprentice. Satan has been working ever since Adam. Satan has degrees. He's been awarded for destroying men, families, and churches. That is his expertise. His degree on his wall is, I'm the destroyer. I will destroy you. I will destroy your family, Genesis 3, Genesis 4, and I will destroy your church. He is smooth, and you won't even know the destruction until it has been completed in most times. There are people today who are in a religion or out of a religion. They will not know that John 8, 44, that Satan is a liar and a murderer. Until the day they take their last breath and end up in the lake of fire in hell. That's too late. That's too late. And they were doing religious things. They were doing what they were taught. They were done whatever they believed is right. Ministers of righteousness also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. They thought they were doing right. But they were following the transformer. A liar, a murderer, Satan. And Christians sometimes won't realize that they are under Satan until they stand before the judgment seat of Christ and they lost the rewards. Isn't that what John said? That we lose not what we re that we receive as a reward? Have we already studied that? These deceivers can get you to lose rewards. That's how serious it is. This is a 51st study. Go back and get all 50 for 51 of them. And this is just one epistle. This is a short epistle. This is one chapter. Every man in the Bible except Jesus fell. Every man outside the Bible has gone astray for all have sinned and come to short of glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. And we are acceptable to Satan. I can't conquer Satan. Preachers cannot conquer Satan. No smutty face, water guns in hell like that. That ain't going to work. Michael the Archangel rebuked Satan by God. Jesus met with Satan and quoted him scripture. What are you going to do? You're absolutely going to do nothing. You're going to trust in the power and the prayer in God or you're going to fall for this guy. There's additional application of your house. Acts 2.46, 5.42, 12.12, Romans 16.5, 1 Corinthians 16.19, Colossians 4.15, Philemon 2. In your house is also expression, these verses I just told you, <coughs> are people who had a church in their house. Read Philemon chapter, uh, verse 2. I want to say chapter so the double application here, not only to the elect sister with her children, don't allow Satan in your house, your home. Don't allow him in your church. Acts 2.46, 5.42, 12.12, Romans 16.15, 1 Corinthians 16.19, Colossians 4.15, Philemon 2. <clears throat> you or your pastor or anybody in that church ought not to bring none. Of Satan's people into that church. 
You'll do much destruction. Now, do I invite a religious friend to church? I'm going to say yes, wearily. But don't let him evangelize in your church. They are there to hear the truth. Not for the church to hear the, their lies. But the Bible says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Where does it say, go out in the world and bring them into the church? Oh, I know the song, bring them in, bring them in. Where does it say in the Bible? Church is no business for Satan. That's the last person you want in church. And yet Satan today is in churches today in the front pew. Amen in the preacher while Jesus is standing outside the door. Not can I come in? Uh, hey, I don't want to go in there. Satan's in there. I'm knocking on the door and say, will you come out? The last church age that's described in Revelation 3 is Satan's inside the church and Jesus is outside. And he's calling you out of the church, not in. We have no business inviting lost people, especially of religions, in the church house when there are brand new babes in Christ and there are babes acceptable to Satan and there are wolves that are going to come in they're going to dress like sheep they're going to act like sheep and they're going to devour your family the Christian brethren would you invite a hungry wolf into your house and let him eat your children well, why would you do it with your church you're supposed to witness to him in your neighborhood. You're supposed to witness to them at the grocery store. You're supposed to witness to them on the job site. You're supposed to witness them outside the church. And then once they get saved, once they believe on Jesus Christ, bring them into church. You know what happened to the two people that were in the church that lied to Peter about the, the, the money that they sold their property? The Holy Spirit dropped them dead. To teach the other Christians, you don't allow lies in church. Now, the Holy Spirit dropped people dead today for every lie that's in the church. Three quarters of the churches right now will be surrounded by caskets. If you do invite one to church, you let the church speak to them. You don't let the, them speak to the church. You got to safeguard your family and your church from Satan and his deceivers and his preachers and his preacherettes and the wolves what did we read what did we read receive him not into your house your home and we also look with acts the verses I already gave you it's also a church first timothy 120 paul names them by name and we can't do that in america today you be under a lawsuit I will give you some names too. I will give you names of deceivers who don't follow the Bible 100%. Who will try to turn you away from the doctrine of Christ. Roman Catholic, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, Islam, the name of evil. This is plain and simple. Wish him not Godspeed. The Merriam Webster Dictionary, a prosperous journey, success. Do not wish success. Good luck. God bless you. Have a nice day, etc. I don't even say goodbye. I say bye, get out of here, leave. The hell with you. That's where they're going. Oh, you're not supposed to cuss. That's exactly where they're going. They're going to hell. So tell them. The final words they leave your, your doorstep, your drive, to hell with you. That's their place of destination unless they change, isn't it? I'm not being cruel. I'm not trying to cuss. I'm just trying to preach the gospel to them. I'm, before they leave, I'm going to tell them where they're going. 11. 2 John 11. Tell me, oh, 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 yeah, you're holier than thou. For he that biddeth him God speed... Like we said, that's a prosperous journey, success, is partaker of his evil deeds. 
if you do wish them luck or whatever, look at what the scripture says in 2 John 11. Now listen. Watch what your mouth is going to say. Because if you let them depart with favorable words, you're authorizing Satan's work to flourish and endure. God bless you. You're telling the deceivers of Satan, go do your work. Go do a good job. You are blessing Satan's work. Good day. Good night. You are wishing them success. You are encouraging Satan's work. Do you want that on your charge? What did Paul say? Verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we had wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Lord, why did I lose that crown? Because you told a Jehovah Witness, good day. They sneeze on your doorstep. You said, God bless you. You see what I mean? You just wish them good tight. You know what I tell people who I don't know sneeze? I say, good tight. I try not to say, God bless you, because I don't know who they are, and I don't know what they believe. And I don't want to offend an atheist. An atheist sneeze, God bless you. He don't believe in God. But if I hear... You, you, Stiley, you're being so foolish. No, I'm not. Not according to scriptures. If a Mormon sneezes and I say, God bless you, I am authorizing Satan to work what he's doing. I am blessing Satan's work through him. I am encouraging Satan's work because he's a Mormon. You're taking it to the extreme. He that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. I don't want to lose a crown. I don't even want to attempt to lose a crown. Don't be offensive. Just watch what you say. Matthew 12, 36. Ready? But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Do not send Satan's men and women away in the name of God or Jesus Christ and lose a reward. And you say, well, sorry, you don't offend them and all that. You, you know, you told them to go to hell. I didn't say tell them to go to hell. I said to hell with you. Like I said, I'm, telling, I'm not telling them. That's where you're going. That's what the Bible says. Let's see what we got for time. Verse 12. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you, speak face to face, that our joy may be full. Now we're, we're coming down, now we're coming to the end. Coming to the close of the letter. What love, what counsels, what Christian doctrine we have learned and studied. We're 49 pages. 51 lessons and the facts that we studied needed for every Christian young and old newly saved and aged have many things to write unto you they're not documented there are things in the Bible that they're not there don't go looking for them for whatever reason the Holy Spirit don't want it. there's one thing that John sees in Revelation in his, in his voice don't write that there are things that listen. You think John says if we were if we were to record everything that Jesus did, four gospels wouldn't have been enough. So there are things purposely left out. <coughs> Not everything in the Bible is chronicled. What happened to Joseph and Mary's husband? Outside the occurrence of thirteen years old, from three to thirty years old, what happened with Jesus? Nothing. Oh, stuff happened. We're just not told. The unrecording happens in the Bible that makes us wonder. How did it end? Who was it? Where was it? Like life, some things in life we'll never know. See, the Bible is a life book. It's boring. It's exciting. It, oh, man. What's going to happen? Oh, man. What happened? 
what how did that John 21 25 and there are <clears throat> and there are also many other things which Jesus did the which that they should be written every one I already said it I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written amen John says listen we couldn't there's no way we could detail everything Jesus done Matthew Mark Luke and Acts and John are just a tip of the iceberg what Jesus did and said the Bible never records Jesus going to the bathroom. The Bible never records all the places Jesus ate. It never records Jesus falling asleep in the mountains. <coughs> if you had documented everything that Jesus said and did, the world could not comprehend all the words. Try memorizing those. Have you ever visited a library? That is zilch. Match to what the books would record. And John said the life of Jesus Christ. You couldn't build a library. The Library of Congress holds the following facts. Books and other materials are shelved on some 838 miles of shelves in three buildings on Capitol Hill and the off-site storage facilities. Today's Library of Congress is unparalleled world resource. The collection of more than 100 million items include more than 3.5 million catalog books over and other printed materials in 470 languages. More than 66.6 .6 million manuscripts. The largest rate book collection in North America. And the world's largest collection of legal materials, films, maps, sheet music, and sound recording. Circulated more than 25 million copies of braille and recorded books and magazines to more than 800,000 blind and physically handicapped reader accounts. And that's nothing to the life of Jesus Christ. That is nothing compared to the life from Adam and Eve to today. And yet, the place in the United States of America, John writes, and there are also many other things which Jesus did. He that did the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Ever wonder how many people Jesus individually touched their lives and the consequence? What happened to all of them? What happened to the to the to the mother whose child was dead in name of and he arose from grave? What happened to him? We don't know. Whatever came to pass to the boy donated the fish and the bread to Jesus to feed the, uh, the five thousand. What happened to that little boy? Astonishing the complete natural life of Jesus, and yet what we learn in glory. We'll have all glory to, to talk about Jesus. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink. So John wrote with paper and he used ink. Huh. Initial Christians used papyrus paper for their letters, scrolls, and codices. It also played a sufficient part of the production of Bible manuscripts until it was switched by Villium, fine grade animal skin, in the fourth century. And as Second John 12, the apostle wrote that he would rather carry his letters face to face than with paper and ink. He thought more important a verbal than writing. Skins of sheep, goats, and calves prepared for use in writing material. Leather was long used as a writing material among the ancient people. Papyrus from Egypt became a more intensively used material. But according to Pilini, P-L-I-N-Y, when the ruler of Egypt prohibited the exporting of it about 190 BC, <clears throat> my boy, <coughs> the use of leather parchment was invented by Pergonium. Possibly this means simply in the progenation of an already existing method of treating the skin so that both sides would be written on. Scrolls of parchment were much more durable than the less expensive papyrus rolls. But I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy might be full. Joy to be in fellowship with other Christians. If your joy is in anything else but Christians or church, your joy is wrong. Psalms 133, 1, 122, 1. So John anticipated to see this woman in person to talk more. So she's a real person. Whether it was to 
too important to put in words too long to be written or just wanted to say the rest for fellowship. He could not wait to warn her and us. That was the utmost important. Listen, he had plenty to say to her, we believe, but what he wanted to write, what he wanted to stress before he would come and see her again, he wrote about deceivers. He wrote about Satan. He wrote about warning her. He gave her warning. That's important. That can't wait. That's what John said. What we just studied, 13 verses, deceivers, warning, that couldn't wait. Whatever John had else to say, the Holy Spirit did not want us to know. But he did warn us to know about what we just studied. I hope this study has been an encouragement, encouragement to do right rather than wrong. Verse 13, the, the children of the elect sister greet thee. Amen. From the elect lady, greetings from, the, from thy elect sister. Thy children... Of the elect sister, greet thee. Amen. Blood sisters, brethren by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, more so in the last, they are in the Lord, and her children are doing the hellos. Before we close, I self counted four or five times, 298 words in this epistle 20 times you saw the word the 14 times and 12 that nine times not eight times i and the word in seven times we four a but christ father for god have love this to truth you and this goes on john says i'm going to meet you i want to talk to you face to face but i have something very important for you that i can't wait a subject that was preached about and taught by jesus backed up by paul a third witness by john the warning as we conclude, Satan's alive, he's well, he has a ministry, he has ministers, he has sources, he has weapons, he's devouring, and he will get you if you're not ready and prepared. 